Welcome back to the Turn on the Music Podcast. This is episode 17. We are on measure two of the spirit of music. And to discuss that, we have CJ. How are you this evening, CJ? I am doing well. How are you, Kyle? Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> you still, <laughs> after this amount of time, you still don't introduce yourself. L- let, me, let me tell you what happened today. So <laughs> I'm building a... <laughs> database that manages doesn't matter it, it monitors um internet speed tests okay and so i built the database this is for work though it's not pers- this is for work this is yeah, not this personal is nerding out this is for work <laughs> no this is for work um so i looked at the database and the the default database said put in the admin put an admin for user and the password my brain interpreted that as put an admin for the account and password as the password. Um, that didn't work, so I troubleshot this thing for four hours, assuming that the password was correct, and I tried to like rebuild the database and the software and update stuff. Four hours later, I reread the direction and went, oh, it says admin for the user and password. Admin, admin, got right in. I was like, son of a <laughs> <laughs> Four and a half hours I spent doing this thing. It was like, <sighs> are you the admin? I am the admin. That's scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got we got Starlink um, at work. Interesting as a potential like thing that we could offer to other people, <clears throat> and they want to monitor what what the bandwidth is like over time. So. But they also wanted a fancy display. And the way speed tests work is like you hit speed test and it like does a speed test. But they want it to be continuous. So I had to write a Python script to have a test every five minutes and then build a funny graphical display that looks pretty. And um, yeah, so that was what I was doing today. Did you learn Python on the job? No. How did you learn it? I Honestly, I didn't write the Python script. Uh, I found a Docker container that had the script already written. So, um, <laughs> I know you knew, you knew like you used to do like C plus plus, right? No, I used to do a little bit of HTML. And that's C- what it is. HTML. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, but but I, very old, it, like it's old, old HTML. Yeah. Before. Yeah. 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 No, I remember. Cause we, I, so. <laughs> Dreamweaver. Yes. Back in the days of Dreamweaver. Yep. Yep. Back when we used to build websites and tables. Yep. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. No. So. Yeah, so that's what I was doing today. So what did you listen to while you did that for four hours? Did you listen to anything? People walking in the door going, hey, can you help me with this? Hey, can you help me with that? <laughs> hey, this is broken. Can you come do this? That's what I listened to. Oh, that's too good. Um, yeah, it was it was crazy. So I, and I think that had I not had so many distractions, I would have figured it out much sooner. Oh, um, sure. Of course. But, you know, I had, it, it was one of those days that I needed a turnstile at the door. Right. Um, it was just, we have a big meeting coming up a week from tomorrow that we are not ready for. And we had like a pre meeting for it today and they realized that all the charts are not even anywhere near ready. So it's like, so yeah, it's been fun. That's interesting. You should just get a this, deli counter. This is so. not water. It's something else. <laughs> <laughs> you should get a deli counter so people can take a ticket. It was funny because I was walking there. There was a line of people at my door. I was out doing something else. I just went, take it, take a number, and I just walked in the door. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I do need one of those. That'd be great. Scan this I, QR I, code for a number. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's there's a, a thing I almost bought on Amazon years ago, but it's a grenade, and it's got a number on it. It says, take a number, so you pull the pin, and <laughs> boom. Um, so, yeah. So how are you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm all right. I, I, it's funny. The, the past three days we had... Um, it was like a three-day workshop on on some new stuff and new technology and stuff within education. So it's actually pretty cool because you get a lot of group of people. You got, you know, it was like K through eight teachers and stuff. Um, but on our end, you know, like they changed the password. Like, Was it password? <laughs> like Tuesday, or was it admin? Like Tuesday night. 
so we started on Tuesday. So Wednesday, everybody came in and had to relearn. Like, it was just so, so I, and you're like, I'm not like, they got to do what they got to do. Like, it's not, I'm mm-hmm. not complaining about it. You know, yeah. like there's, you know, it was just really funny. It was just kind of ironic. But then we were mm-hmm. having issues with people going on to uh, the network and staying on the network. And, you know, I fixed a few of them. And you know me, I don't, I understand the networking and I understand all this stuff, but I don't know how the back end works. Not as well mm-hmm. as you do. So <laughs> I go to the IT department, I'm talking to him and he goes, let me show you. Apparently there were like four computers that were sending like malware or something to the Wi-Fi. And because of the way they, the Wi-Fi is built, it knocks everybody off mm. to protect itself, which makes sense. Right. Mm-hmm. So he had a blacklist like the four computers and I, I had to go into each room and be like, four of you are not going to work. <laughs> this, is like, this is why, you know, luckily everything kind of worked itself out and it would do, it was just like, it, it was one of those things where I always go in anticipating that there's going to be a problem. And I always hope that it's a problem that I deal with. And because it was the internet, I'm like, Oh, you know, cause I can't do that. So it's, it's mm-hmm. and thankfully the IT team, I get along with them really well and they're, you know, I can go in there and bust their chops and, make it work but it's just you know it's like i can't it the computer doesn't want to run this pro like i don't it was something i couldn't answer you know (laughs) right it was one of those things but otherwise that's that's it that's done today so tomorrow not that it's it's just good to be friday tomorrow it'll be nice yeah i was hoping friday was going to be a a low-key day it's not going to be because we were supposed to have a dry run for this meeting today and because the charts were so needed so many fixes they pushed that meeting to tomorrow so now I've got a video recording in the morning and then this 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 thing that I have to run in the afternoon. Are you so. are you building the charts? Mm-mm. So it's just whomever is doing the chart. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, they they build them all, but I I've got to build build all the technology that supports all of the charts. So all the the demos of the technology that we build, I have to make sure run right by tomorrow. Are you uh so. so have you listened to any music this week to kind of like Not at all. I have not listened to a note of music. Really? Yeah. Cuz I know you don't listen to it in the car. You're more of like podcast or whatever in the car. Yeah, for the most part. I I mean, the last couple of weeks has been a lot of Corey Wong and I'll tell you I'm getting fed up with the speakers in my car. So I'm slowly going through what's left of the audio system from my old car and getting ready to build the new one in the new car. So Left from your um, old car from your Subaru? The Subaru that was totaled. You took it? I took the amplifier out. Yeah. Um, that's about it. I feel the same way about mine. I like, I'm not happy with the sound and the, and the mm-hmm. unit, but I'm going to wait like a year because there's potential that I may like upgrade my car, you know? Um, so I don't want to like dump it in and then, you know, a right. year later, you know, sell, yeah. you know, trade in the car. If I decide in the next six months I'm going to keep my car as long as possible, then I'll put a little money into mm-hmm. it. Because I'm in it every yeah, day. I, if I wasn't in it every day, I wouldn't care. Oh, yeah. That, that's the thing. It's like I'm in it every day, and it's like I don't really enjoy the sound coming out of it. So I pulled the amplifier out tonight to look at it, and I realized that there's a quick disconnect power cable that I left in the car. So I'm, I found one online for 50 bucks. So that'll be here Saturday, and then I'm oh, going to start nice. building the rest of the stuff around that. So That's cool. I'll do amplifier sub first, and then I'll eventually do speakers. But. Are you going to take a lot of space out of your car by putting in the sub and stuff? I think in the beginning I'm going to put the current sub box that I have. So I'll lose a little bit of space. They do make one um, that's what they call a stealth box, and it sits on the side of the car, so you don't lose hardly any space. Well, that's good. I'll eventually get that, I think, but that's a 1000 bucks. I'm not going to – I mean, I'm, I'm going to put an audio system in right now for about 300 bucks. Right. So, Makes sense. Because I've got most of the stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. Are you reading anything? Um, the spirit of music, obviously, and then I'm about to get into. So I have a Security Plus certification, and that that expires in July of 2024. In order for me to renew that, I either need to get another certification or go through like a whole bunch of continuing education hours. And I figure if I'm going to go through those continuing education hours, I might as well get a certificate out of it. Right. Or certification, so I'm going to go with um, a new certification. So I've been <clears throat> getting books for that. I haven't started reading them yet, but the test is a pretty substantial test. So is this like is this the same certification you have? The security? No, it's a different certification. Oh, okay. It's a much higher certification. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. 
the good news is the test used to be 250 questions and six hours long. The new version is now 100 to 150 questions and only three hours long. So, Oh, that's better. Is it yeah. on a computer in a room? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yep. that's the stinky part. Yeah. Yeah. Staring at a computer so. for that amount of time. Yep. Yep. So I'm working on getting set up for the class and then start reading the books and start figuring out what I don't know. Nice. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a blast. Yep. <laughs> so speaking of books, shall we get into the book? Let's get into the book. So we're on measure two, um, which is entitled The Teacher. And the tagline is, when the teacher is ready, the student will appear. And you and I spoke briefly before we got on, and we both kind of like said we don't have a lot highlighted in this chapter. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I didn't think about it because when you mentioned it to me, I didn't really go through the chapter to kind of check. Like I knew what the chapter was. Right. But I didn't go through it again. And going through it, I'm like, yeah, I can see that. Because it's more of a... Um, it's really kind of setting the stage for yeah, the book. That's the, Yeah, setting the stage for the book. So there's not... There's there's some stuff in it, but you know, it's really getting us into what the story is going to become. Yep. Because then, yeah. the, then the chapters get a little beefy. <laughs> mm, <laughs> or, yeah. or dense, I should say. Yes, yes. So, so uh, we pick up with Victor, who is um, going on a jog in his tights and yellow rain jacket and garden hat. Um, so what I wear when it, I go running. Well, you don't run. <laughs> don't kid yourself. I, just say, which I was going to ask you the question. Do you feel, so he says he does this to help declutter his mind. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've spoken about how you're starting to walk again. Yeah. I, I know it's, it's very difficult for you, but uh, it is. <laughs> do you feel that that helps declutter your mind? Yes. Why? Um, I think, especially now that I'm learning to walk again, which it sounds like I've been in a terrible accident. I know, I, I, I know, I know. Um, you, were, you, you taught, you spoke about it pre in the previous episode about uh, how yeah. your feet were hitting the ground and all that mm -hmm. that stuff, and kind of like relearning how to do it properly, right. so you don't hurt. So it's become a meditation because okay. so you know the meditation aspect of it is thinking about one thing. So it's thinking about how my feet are hitting the ground. So in that way, it's focusing on that and staying focused on that and not letting my brain get in the way. So it's similar to how I do meditation, which is focus on the breath or sound or something so that my brain doesn't get in the way. So I think that's part of it. Yeah. Um, I do also think that the, the nature part of it, you know, like we, I talked about the bird and the cloud and that sort of stuff, like that is a big part of it. And I was watching... I don't know how I found it last night, but there was a guy, Peter something or other, and he drove into... Weirdest last like, name ever. Yeah, something what is a weird name? It's like Scaparella, <laughs> Scavengerella, something like that. Um, so he drove into like the heart of West Virginia, like really like the deep, deep part of West Virginia, the coal mining area. area. Um and they were talking about to to people, you know, just you know what, what's what's coal mining like, and you know what's, you know what's it like living in this town of like two hundred and fifty people that all they do is mine coal. Right. Like, so he was talking. He found a bunch of kids or young young adults, um, and there was one girl who was twenty three. She worked in I don't know what kind of a store, but she was saying that like fifty percent of her her high school graduating class are all on drugs. The other fifty percent are trying to work and make their lives, you know. And she said, for a while I was on anti-anxiety medication and it was making things worse. And then I started walking and hiking with my son and things got better because I was out in nature doing things. Sure. And so, you know, I mean, you know, when you do exercise, your, your brain does release, you know, endorphins or whatever. So that makes you feel better. And, right. you know, so there's, there's that, that too. Right. That I think helps. Do, uh, do you listen to music? Um, sometimes, um, I did a little bit last week. Sometimes it's just podcasts that I haven't finished. Um, and you, so a little bit of everything and you could focus on your walking while you're listening to what's going yeah. on in yours. Okay. The, the podcasts that I listen to are not very dense podcast podcasts. Okay. Um, 
you know, there's one, I, there's only two podcasts that I really listen to. Uh, one is called We Built a Thing, which has got uh, three guys who are woodworkers. They just talk about their family and the projects they're working on. So it's nothing really dense. Sure. And then there's another one. I love this one. It's, uh, the, it's We Got the Chocolates. They're uh, three Aust- Australian, maybe they're rugby or cricket players, but they're just hysterical. <laughs> um, they just they, they tell stupid dad jokes. They make fun of each other. So it's just it's a comedy podcast. They're just they're just like clowns, you know. That, and they just joke around. And so it's nothing dense. I'm not really learning anything. It's just something I enjoy doing to keep my mind off of other things. Cool. Makes sense. So, yeah. and you don't wear like a raincoat and weird hat and no, oh, okay. no, no. Good, because that'd be scary seeing you down the road. I, like it's usually toe shoes. Actually, I'm starting the toe shoes. Um, but yeah, and shorts. Great. And tank top. Yeah, great. Yeah, just don't put a raincoat on. No. <laughs> or a garden hat. Or a garden and, hat. And, and, and carry a unicycle. And carry like a unicycle. Victor did. <laughs> Which is what uh, so. happens to Victor at this point. Yeah, so while he's out on a run, he finds a broken unicycle. He thought it was a bike. He thought he was going to you know, take it home, fix it for a kid, and... Turned out to be a unicycle, and I, like he said that as a kid, he used to ride around on a unicycle. I would have loved to see Crazy Victor Wooten r- riding around on a unicycle, like to class and stuff. But like, I could totally like just I could totally, totally see, see him doing that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He says that a bunch of him and his friends uh, would ride unicycles and they'd improvise costumes, and they learn how mm-hmm. to do like basketball stunts and tricks, and they would just yep. join their local town parade and do these stunts and stuff, even though they yep. weren't invited. But yep, <laughs> you know people loved it. So yeah, yeah, and like like he's he's a crazy person. Like up until I think he was like in his fifties, every day every year on his on his birthday he would do a backflip. Yeah, and he would put it on social media. Yeah, you know, like it's pretty cool. That's awesome. I I can't so. do a backflip. Yeah, I can't either. I I can do back fat. I can't do backflip. <laughs> 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 oh, that's too funny. Um. So then he goes into, this is where I kind of like marked. Mm-hmm. So he picks up the unicycle, decides to take it with him because he figures his dad could fix it for him. And then this paragraph comes up. It was a beautiful day and relatively warm for that early for that early in the morning. The sun was low and not a cloud could be seen. I was happily surprised by a gentle puff of air on my left cheek. And then it was gone. I looked around. Leaves weren't moving. They were motionless. He thought that was strange. And then he didn't feel the wind at all. And he took a few more steps and it happened again. But he said it was different. He said, it didn't just blow on my face. It caressed me. I turned my head in its direction, offered a smile. I had convinced myself it was just my imagination. But then it happened again, this time on the other cheek. It was as if a cool, moist finger had gently stroked the right side of my face. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that's interesting because, like, at first you're reading and you're like, that's just weird. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, it's very plausible. Yeah. It could yeah. just have been uh, that moment. Yep. Um, And he mentions that he thinks it's one of those air guns. Mm-hmm. But he says that he doesn't, like, typically you can hear that pop. And then right. afterwards, the air, like he said, he didn't hear mm-hmm. a pop, so it couldn't have been that, you know, like, yep. there was, and there was no one around. Like, it was by himself. Yep. And, uh, yeah, and he kind of, you know, suspects that it's music kind of pulling him because yep. of, you know, all the things he's been hearing recently. And um, on the next page, he says, the wind, like music, is invisible. Although we can feel them both, we can only see their presence by the emotion, by the motions of the things they touch. Notes to music are like confetti to the wind, which I just thought was a really cool way of putting it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and and then he starts following the wind. Mm hmm. You know, he he hears um, he's standing in front of a building, leaves and debris were dancing, you know, in front of him. Uh, there was a wind chime. And it seemed to come from all directions at once, as if Mother Nature played the melody herself. Mm -hmm. And then he sees a flash of light. Yep. It was a UFO. No, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) It was a UFO. Yep. And that that flash of light 
introduces us to our first new person in the book, a gentleman by the name of Jonathan, who was sleeping in his apartment and had a bass guitar in his lap. And in walks Victor, kind of like Michael did years ago. And um, kind of the same conversation, you know, the whole, how did you get here? What are you doing here? Right. How did you get in? And, you know, eventually he says, you know, what, why are you here? And Victor says, I'm, I'm your teacher or I'm the teacher is what he says. Um, and then the same thing that happened in the other book, you know, I can't teach anything. I can only show you things. So Jonathan finally says, okay, show me music. He answered with hesitation, saying the word in a surprising way. And Victor responds, yes, I can do that, but not as well as music herself can. And that is something that we've talked about a lot, you know, and, and something I'm trying to do is I'm, you know, relearning music these days is trying to get out of the way so that I can learn from music. And it's hard. It's hard to you know, do. Well, it's hard to do taught. because of how we learned music. Mm-hmm. And yeah. how we were taught it versus showed it, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. You know, and I think that's I think that's very interesting. And I still feel like there's that. I'm not saying it's a hundred percent there because I've been out of the teaching end of music for a while. I'm not saying that mm-hmm. there aren't people out there that are approaching it differently. I'm not saying right. that they're not. Uh, but the thing is, is it feels like it's not the case, unless right. you know we've listened to a few artists like. Hannah Wickland, mm-hmm. right? She's been playing since a young age. Yep. Right. Corey Wong. He's been playing since a young, for a young age. The uh, the Nickel Creek. They've been playing since what we figured out they were like eight or nine years old that they've been they were playing together. Mm-hmm. So they yep. probably were playing before that, but then they've right. been playing together. So they've been together for over thirty plus years. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's not. Yep. I'm not saying they didn't have lessons or they didn't have this. It's just that there had to be something in their time for them to kind of like listen to music. Right. Yep. You know? And, you know, I always thought like, does that have to do with our, is it a traumatic experience that keeps certain people from releasing it to the scent of, you know, what was the, what's the line? Um, letting them listen to music herself. Like, Mm -hmm. did they have something happen in their past? Did they have, you know, some kind of experience that blocks the ability for them to kind of separate and really hear something else? And and I I think part of it is just our culture. Right. And I think that that's why, you know, especially back in like the jazz era and the blues era, you know, that's why drugs were so prevalent and, and alcohol was so prevalent in these musicians because they needed a way to release and they didn't know how other than turning to these drugs and it you know that's what they did right you know i mean i I don't think it's as bad as it was back then but then again is the music as good as it was back then i don't think so well and i and and but that also you know back to that it's music could also be the outlet to help right so there's like two different sides to this whole entire thing yeah and if you can find a way past that barrier right right and but this it also brings it back and i've said this before multiple times I think that's the uniqueness of social media. Mm-hmm. I there's good, bads, and a different, and I think there's more bad than good. But I think some of the small good things that have come out of it are these musicians that we would have never heard of mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the fact that they placed themselves in front of everybody on social media. Right. And right. and I think that that you know, and it's funny because in a way, it started with like MySpace. And people doing band accounts. And now mm-hmm. MySpace is what I think mainly music related entertainment stuff. Yeah. You know, if they're still out there. And I think that is a big deal is the fact that we do like he even said it in the previous and I think he mentions it in this book, like music is not the same as it used to be. Mm-hmm. It's not. Yep. Nope. It's you not. know? And that's why I say like we're getting like we wouldn't have found Hannah Wickland. If it wasn't for the yep. fact that we were on social media. Agreed. How did and you... Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to ask you how you found Jacob Cobb... Col- Jacob Collier? Uh, YouTube. Um, there was a guy, Charles Cornell. Um, his video was... In, in fact, my sister just sent it to me two days ago. I, I saw. I watched the video years ago. It was yeah. two years ago. I saw the... You know, and 
The video is called Why Musicians Like Jacob Collier. Okay. And I was like, oh, I should probably watch this. You know? Right. That's how I found him. Right. Right. And I, I think that I think that's the that's one of the good things that came out of it is people mm-hmm. like us who are looking for other musicians outside of yep. the mainstream what's on the radio. Right. That's where YouTube, Instagram, I'm not on TikTok, but probably TikTok, you know, even Twitter, like that's just kind of where they came out of. Yep. You know, and then but from there, because of them, we learn about their influences. Right. Which potentially are people that we know already or are also of artists that they may have found through Mm -hmm. their growth and development and and all that stuff. Yeah. And then I I think the other part of it is, you know, we talked about it in the in the previous chapters. You know, we talked about how Victor goes through the the, what's he called? The ruler of music or whatever. And. You know, the, the record is like 12 inches and then... Yes. No, it was conscious of 12 inches. And then by the time you get to these MP3s and stuff, it's a very small portion of the original sound that, that, that came out. On the other side of that, if you think about all of these artists that, we, that we're that we finding that are not really out there in the mainstream, you know, think about the day... I mean, dating ourselves a little bit, the days in like tapes and CDs... Like, we would have never heard of these people ever. Like, even if we had social media, we'd be like, all right, that's really cool. But, like, I want to hear their stuff. These record stores and CD stores would have, wouldn't have had that right. stuff. Right. Because so much of the stuff is done in a way that, so, like, right. Spotify and Cobas and Tidal and all these Apple Music, it's a, it's a way to spread music further than it used to be in the past. Right. And that's right. cool. That is very cool. I think that is. And I think that's why you started seeing more independent labels come out because it allowed them to do what they wanted to do and find a way to get this stuff out there. But to your point, right. they're still limited to what and how far that CD or right. tape is going to go and where they're going to be able to sell it and so on and so forth. Yeah. And, and like Victor was talking about, you know, like using compression and electronic music techniques and all these recording techniques, I think the same is true. Like there's a place for that, but there's also a place for these digital mediums to share this music like like it's done if it's done in the right way and for the right reason like i think it's perfectly acceptable you know to do that that's where the yin and the yang comes in exactly it's finding the balance between those two things and i think that's a big part of what he's saying and it's hard to find that balance but i i and i and i feel like it he's like we need to understand the traditional end of doing things before Mm -hmm. we pull in those other tools right and that, you know, so uh, that was, so he, so he says that, he, to repeat what he says, he goes, yes, I can do that, but not as well as music herself. Mm-hmm. And then Jonathan says, what do you mean herself? And Victor goes, you will see. Or not. Right. <laughs> and I think that's interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, Um so this goes into Jonathan asking what instrument does Victor play? Mm-hmm. And Victor goes, I play music, not instruments. Yep. And that leads and into... And that reminds me, so um, I had a friend who went to Vassar College. Okay. And Taj Mahal played there once. And I don't know how to explain Taj Mahal other than he is like the MacGyver of music. <laughs> <laughs> kind of similar to that to the guy that guy Joe that that Victor mentions in the in this chapter, who played a solo on his shoelace, like Taj Mahal could pick up anything and make music with it, you know. And I yeah. think that that's, you know, that's what Victor's saying there. Like, you know, and then he picks up his unicycle and makes all these crazy sounds out of it, you know. Um, that's like Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah, he developed that. Uh, I think it was like a, was it a toilet bowl seat cover? Was that him? I don't remember what it was. Oh, there was. He created like an instrument and he was like, here you go. Got got a new instrument, mm-hmm. right? You know? Yeah. But yes. So he plays yep. the unicycle. Yeah. And before he gets to the unicycle, he says this. He says to Jonathan, you asked if I had a key. Music is the key. Your search for music created the spark that brought us together. My use of an instrument, any instrument, allows you to hear how musical I am. But I express musicality through the instrument and anyone I choose. Again, I play music, and once you stop playing your bass, uh uh-oh, my page didn't turn, sorry. (laughs) Once you stop playing your bass, 
you might start playing music too. And again, this is a recurring theme. You know, we've talked about it before. You know, if you go back to, you know, authors, like it doesn't matter what pen they use to write the story. Right. Like, and that's the same thing here. They may doesn't have a, spe- instru- a pen that they favorite, right. but it doesn't right. matter. Right. It doesn't matter. The right. story still comes through them. Right. So right. that's the same point. You know, it doesn't matter what instrument you have or what thing you have in your hand. And I and like we, we talked about, you know, the Corey Wong tiny instruments a couple of weeks ago. Like it doesn't like the drummer was playing on a kid's drum set. Like if you listen to the way he played that drum set, you have no idea he was playing on a kid's right. drum set. And and whoever mic'd them did such a great mm-hmm. job because it yeah. gave those instruments so much depth, you know. Yep. And it, it showed their ability, which is which yep. is even better on mm-hmm. that end of it. Um and then he asks his name. And at first, he wasn't sure what name he was going to give him, but he decided to tell him the truth and say, call me Victor. Mm-hmm. And then he challenges Victor to play something, but he holds yep. his bass guitar tight, so Victor yep. was not allowed to mm-hmm. use his bass guitar. So Victor goes yep. and plays the unicycle. His unicycle. Yep. <laughs> and, you know... And that's when he tells a story about his friend who played on stage in front of thousands of mm-hmm. people, his shoelace yep. and how yep. he like bent it and stretched it to make the different notes. Mm-hmm. And like at first he said he tried and it didn't really work. Like he was like, he kind of like freaked out, mm-hmm. you know, and then he tried a few things and he decided to, uh, he took a breath, closed his eyes. He saw these lines mm-hmm. that turned into a circle. Yep. And he started. And what he did, what he, then what he did was he going back to the first book. He focused on the groove. He focused on. And the if groove. you remember, the, never lose the groove to find right. yourself a note, and that's right. what he did. Yeah. Created a groove and just kind of went with it. And he played it. He got into it. He started bobbing his head, doing all that great stuff. And then just towards the end, he takes a big inhale. Uh, inhale. He held it for dramatic pause. And they slowly place the instrument on the floor with one hand raising the other in the air. Mm-hmm. And he got Jonathan's attention. Yep. And then he goes into Jonathan kind of like leaned, leaned, leaned forward in astonishment. And then after he knew he had Jonathan's attention, he goes, it goes after a minute. I leaned in close, staring firmly into his eyes. An unexpectable, an unexplainable energy emanated from my body. His face softened as he held ga- my gaze, giving way to what I was about to say. And he says, listen to me, Jonathan. Now you know, music is everywhere. You do not have to create it. You just have to feel her and become one with her. Then anything you touch can and will become your instrument. Mm-hmm. And it's real, it's interesting because... I catch myself all the time, like tapping my hands, take doing this, doing that. And I'll take like random, like random toys with that my son has and I'll play them and I'll do all this stuff. And mm-hmm. and my, my wife has multiple times said to me, she's like, you can make music out of anything. I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, it's just, it's That's, fun. Like I try to figure yeah. it out. I try to figure out the pitch. I try to like, I'll mm-hmm. tap things, but like, is that annoying? Like it, I do it for fun, but I'm, it's funny. Cause I never thought about it this way. It was just right. me having fun. And yeah, it, but that that's go- the point. And that's the point. And that goes back to what yeah. he said. He goes, like a kid who just does it and doesn't care. Yeah. And at that moment, because I'm having fun, I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what people think. Mm-hmm. I'm just having fun. And then I end up like getting a groove and doing this. And it's mm-hmm. it, it's just funny. And you don't. Yeah. But it's but when you pick when I pick up the saxophone, which you can't see on the screen, but I am pointing to it because it's mm-hmm. hanging up on my wall. Um Yep, that's where that mental block comes in. That it's like exactly uh, right. It's like, oh, I actually have an I instrument that do? I'm supposed to play in my head. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what is this thing? Oh man, there is one more thing that he he writes and he says, um, where he didn't know where his next step was, mm-hmm. and and in the last paragraph he goes, I had to walk the path and teach myself, and the best way to completely teach myself was to teach someone else or more accurately show someone else Mm -hmm. and then he he ends it he goes 
he felt he was ready to continue the music lesson. Yep. Do you feel so? Uh, for me, um, I'll use when I use when I teach in the classroom. Um, I like to show more than teach. And I truly think that from me showing, I learn more in that moment. Oh, so like, I do too. I know yeah. enough to show the those that are listening, the students, te- whatever, whoever I'm teaching. But as I go along, I start to realize, oh, well, now you still you can actually do this, and you could do that. Yeah. I learn, and by the end, not only have they learned stuff, but I've learned so much more. Yeah, me too. And I and I love that. It's such a cool feeling to leave knowing that. Not only did you impact the people you were with and they felt good, but like mm-hmm. you came out of there going, oh, I got to go try this now and I got to go do this and I got to go do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I'll like, there are things that I learned while teaching, like, like they're so obvious and like, I've been doing this for so long. Like you think I would understand it, but I remember I was teaching a lesson and we were going over, I think it was the A flat scale and the kid was having trouble understanding different key signatures and stuff. And I don't know what hit me, but all of a sudden I realized that all of the notes in the A flat scale are not in the in the A major scale. Every single note is different. And I went, whoa. <laughs> and then I went, there are four flats in the key of A flat, and there are three sharps in the key of A. That adds up to seven. That and every scale is like that. Right. So the key of D has got two two sharps. D flat has five flats. It always adds up to seven. Right. Which like, is what he goes about yeah. in the in one of the chapters in the previous yep. book with uh um oh my goodness, her name. I can't remember her name. Isis. Isis, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Where they go through all that math. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and like I never never clicked until I was teaching this one kid and I went, Whoa. Right. And yeah. It's those like little things that Oh, I never thought about it that way. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like even I had another e- kid who was who was a great trombone player. Yeah. And um, I realized that we would go through like one of the things that I did was we go through scales. The first thing you do, you walk in the door, we go through all our scales. Every right. scale you know, you play. And I realized because he went to Nisma and he like he played three scales, and I realized that they weren't in the order that we normally do them in. And I was like, oh, he's having trouble playing scales out of order because we always go in the circle of fifths it's like all right well we gotta fix that and then i realized i had the same problem playing them on the piano like because i always go in the circle of fifths just you know just do it that way so i came up with this little thing where we take cards and each card was the scale so like an eight is your c scale like like two is 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 d you know reds are sharps and, and black are flats so it was a random thing, and we just go through, and all of a sudden, like he started playing his scales much better, because now it wasn't oh, it's the same thing we do every week. Right now, it was it was a random thing. So and, I started doing it with all my kids. And a little insight. So we, um, Kyle and I, I'm I'm still in New York. Kyle's in Ohio, but we both grew up in New York, and New York has a cont- competition called NISMA, which is uh, New York State Student Music Association. Yep, that's what it is. Yep. And basically, you as a musician in every grade level, I think it's like fourth and on, or maybe six and on, but you go, you learn a piece of music, and then you go in front of a judge. And mm-hmm. you and you could do it as a singer or as an instrumentalist. As an instrumentalist, or a group. you have to play scales. Mm-hmm. And they're random. Like, they're going to throw a scale out at you. Like you're not going to know yeah, which each one each level is. has a has a certain list of scales right. that you're expected right. to know. Right, exactly. So you may go in with having to know six, but you don't know which one you're going to play. That's right, exactly. Right. And then you have to sight read, mm-hmm. and then you perform whatever piece you practice. And then when you do that, they give you there's a rating. You know everything from zero to a hundred, and then they take. Those is it zero to a hundred now. I don't know. I'm 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 assuming it used to be. It I used may be, to be wrong. One through four was based in like thirty six or thirty eight, and then five and six are based on a hundred. Maybe. So. Well, and but in any case, the idea was that um, at certain grade levels, you go, would go to your all county, and you would mm-hmm. be a part of the band or the choir, and then you would do the right. all state, and you go to the mm-hmm. all. So you would 
you would have opportunities. So you could make it to all county and not all state, but you could, right. but you would make it to all state and you could do all county as well. So it's like it was and a it was competition all as well. But it was very like I remember it was always scales. It was always scales, mm-hmm. and, and and it and I always thought you know it's funny about reading this book and when they talk like why are you practicing your scales, and it's you're absolutely right. That's the first thing that we would do. Mm-hmm. Which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. No. But sometimes it becomes this daunting task. Mm-hmm. And it could also, and it could, you know, kind of stir you away from wanting to play. Right. Yeah. Right. And and, and I always kind of treated it, like the reason I did it every week was because kids hated it. And it's <laughs> like, well, I, it's part of the thing. It's part right. of the gig. Like, it's not a big deal. You're just psyching yourself out. Right. Like, it doesn't really matter. And, and like, as a pianist, like, the, the scales that freak people out, like, B, F sharp, and C sharp are the ones that freak them out. Like, B is the easiest scale to play because your hands sit naturally over the notes. If you plop your hand down on the note B, like, the your your fingers fall on the right notes. Right. And if you plop it up on, on from E to, to B, like... They naturally fall on the notes. Like your hand naturally fits that. It's the easiest scale. C is so much harder. I but agree. It doesn't have any black notes, and, and kids freak out about that. It's like it's yeah. not a big deal. I'm not a piano player, but I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's very interesting how we uh, how we learned growing up because we were totally taught versus showed. Hmm. I mean, I did. I had a teacher, uh, a private uh, saxophone teacher in high school, and I, I thought he was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And and he had a mixture of both. Yeah, I had a lot of teachers yeah. who were a mixture of both, but I think most of them favored the teaching over showing. I he, I have to say that he always had his horn out. Mm-hmm. He always had his horn out. He stopped using his horn when I was slacking. You know, like right. when I probably didn't practice for the week or whatever the case may mm-hmm. have been. And it was forcing me to be on my A game. Whereas like when yep. I was doing well, he would join in and mm-hmm. he would, you know, and, and all that stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of it. I mean, even when I went into college, when we I started, I asked specifically for a vocal teacher that worked heavily on breathing technique. Mm hmm. Because I knew that I mine was good, but I didn't. But it wasn't as good as it should have been for a specifically a singer. You know, forget about right. instrumentals, but just a singer. And she even said to me, she goes, "I have to say, she goes, not many people think of it this way." And and she was like complimented to the fact they did it. And it's really funny because after two years of being with her, and I thought we were doing well, she's like, "I think it's best that you move on to another teacher for whatever the reasons are." Mm-hmm. And I end up moving in, uh, moving on with somebody who was in the group. Um, I forget what group he was in, uh, and he just took my voice to another to to another space, which was awesome, yep. you know. Uh, but he showed both of those teachers showed. Mm-hmm. Yep, they didn't just teach; they showed, and that I think was the turning point for me to realizing, okay, this this could work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I was eighteen, right? You know? That's the crazy part. I mean, I started mm-hmm. a lot later in life with, a, with the singing, but uh, you know, to think about turning eighteen and it and 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 trust me, still stuff still doesn't click. And I'm forty three <laughs> years old, you know. So I'm just mm-hmm. saying, but like, but at eighteen, after doing stuff for how many years you were you were playing, and you're like, oh, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's how yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, I think I was pushing like twenty five years of like playing the piano, and I went, oh. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's crazy. Yep. So, that was a short chapter. It sure was. But like you said, it was so, a, it's a good um it's a good stage for what's about to yeah. come. Yeah. Yeah. And and the and the story, I have to say the story with this book picks up so nicely. Mm-hmm. It really it's a good pace. I don't feel like yeah. it's rushed. Um I feel like all the elements are there that are needed. And then mm-hmm. when you get to the climax of it, you're just kind of like, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. okay, cool. This is awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is, it's 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 a well written book. Sure is. And it's not and it's not a difficult read. No, not he's at not all. wordy. No, that's what I like about it. 
And especially when the story picks up, like you want to keep going. Right. Yeah, it's a little slow in the beginning, but you're learning about what it is. And it's right. not slow like you don't want to read it. You just, mm-hmm. I think you get anxious for what's about to come. Yeah. Because he does a good job of keeping you engaged with the story, even though he's uh, building the stage. Mm-hmm. So, because there are a couple times in the first few chapters, I'm like, what does he mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what are we going to find out? Yeah. So. I have, All right. I so. Have, I have nothing more to us, say. Yeah, let's. End it there, and we'll uh, see you all next week. Yeah. Um, make sure you're following us on Twitch and Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. That'll all be in the notes as it usually is. Yeah. Um, we do go live Friday nights and Sunday nights, so catch us there on Twitch. That link is in the in the show notes as well. So I think that's it. I think that is it. Until yeah. the next one. Until the next one. Yeah. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for listening to the Turn On The Music podcast. We hope that you join us next week. Click on the link tree in our show notes to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our Twitch and YouTube channel. If you would like to continue the conversation, join us on our Discord. If you like what you heard, please share it with a friend. And if you really want to help us promote the show, head over to Apple Podcasts or the podcast service of your choice and give us a five-star rating. Remember, always share the music. Thank you.